Hello everyone, welcome to Chats with the Farmer's Daughter. My name is Candace English. I am the Farmer's Daughter. Um, I'm really excited to be back. It's been a while. I think I did a podcast maybe at the beginning of the month. It's like Tuesday, September, or October, August 30th. Oh, it's that time of year. Um, and so, yeah, it's been a while. Um, I'm excited to be back. I had surgery this month and that went really good. Um, my recovery was um, just a lot more recovery-ish than I expected. Um, I had a friend tell me afterwards that recovering and resting are not the same things. Um, so that would have been good to know beforehand. I was like, had kind of a list of things that, you know, there's like little projects that I wanted to get done, planning projects and then knitting projects and stuff like that. And it like just having those on an agenda was really overwhelming for me. I never should have done that to myself. Um, well, I did do some crafting. It was like fun things that, I don't know, that weren't planned, pre-planned. So I think that was a good life lesson for myself of, you know, if I'm taking time off for sickness um, and health and or vacation, like no planning worky things. Remind me of that next time I do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I did I, I did surgery that took, it took me probably 10 days to really start feeling a little bit better and kind of be back at it. Um, but even then, like a week later, you know, I still, I'm working from home a lot. I've kind of got into this lovely habit of working from home. Um, I'm at the shop today though, so that's exciting. I was supposed to record a podcast last week. I just really wasn't, um... I wasn't in a great place mentally. Some things came up and then I was just kind of like a little bit like foggy and tired still and just not, um, you know, the kids went back to school. There was just a lot going on and I just didn't want to show up and be like half pissy about it. So, um, so yeah. And then I was supposed to record on Sunday and I just completely forgot, like, who didn't even think about it. Like it was on my agenda. I'd been thinking about it on Friday. Didn't think about it Saturday at all. Did not think about it Sunday. So it was kind of funny. Um, so I'm here today and uh, yeah, back to school stuff has been happening. Um, my son is in football. I mean, talk about that like every episode. Um, I'm such a football mom. It's such a weird concept. When I was in high school, it was a bad girl. And I was, you know, I'd go to football games, but I was usually smoking weed and drinking at halftime. So, sorry kids. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I never really got to like experience like a normal, I didn't have a normal childhood by any means. Um, and I definitely never had a normal high school experience. And so to see my kids like, just live these normal things or normal, um, healthy, I guess I should say, healthy lifestyle and really have a passion for something they love more so um, and are good at is exciting. So um, I just, I love it so much and I'll keep talking about it. They won their first game last week. So that was exciting. I am like a nervous wreck. Um, wrestling has really like my son has wrestled for years he took last year off he's gonna wrestle this year again though but man there's nothing more nerve-wracking than that and so I'm just like a ball of I'm like are all the other parents like this nervous out here um I am and it's so fun and I love it so I made fry bread for the football team last week um, and I made 200, we made 200 things of fry bread and like 12 gallons of chili. It was crazy. Me and my husband and my mom did it and it was so fun though. Um, we really enjoyed ourselves. 
um, doing it and the kids obviously loved it. I was so surprised how many kids have never had fry bread. And I know that if you're not from like an indigenous community, like that's probably really normal, but like we do have so many indigenous kids and events and things here. And these kids had never even, like so many, I would say majority of them had never really even heard of fry bread or Indian tacos. And I'm like, you put the chili on the fry bread. And finally I was like, I'm just gonna culture you and this is how you do it. And some of the kids who were kind of like, like, no, snub their nose. They, they're the kids who like came back for fourth. So um, it was awesome. It was really fun. And yeah, so we're just kind of in that mode. It's still hot here, which is annoying. I'm like ready. I've gotten some fall clothes and um, some new jeans and I'm just like ready to wear them, but it's gonna be like 99 tomorrow here, which is so annoying. So um, yeah, just I'm ready. I'm ready for the cool weather. Kind of going along with that back to school. Um, and obviously sweater weather too. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I've been up to. Um, let's see, oh, uh, yes, or oh, Sunday, um, we had a little FDF end of the summer party at my house and that was really fun and we made burgers and played yard games and knit and made cocktails and it was a really good time. And I think all of us want to do it a little bit more often, get together. Um, all of us are like major foodies too. Everyone loves food. And so we were talking about maybe starting like a little culinary club or something like that. I think it would be so fun. Been wanting to do that for a while. So um, anyways, okay, moving on to what I'm wearing. I love this. I honestly, it's kind of embarrassing because I've never even marketed or shown this sweater at all. And the reason why is that it's not blocked and I've been saving blocking it to do like a Zoom class on blocking. I had done this, I don't know if you guys ever saw, like I did this big um, Instagram live on blocking and it was great and super educational but then like halfway through my my audio cut out so you couldn't hear any of my audio and so you know what i think maybe i'll do i was thinking this actually for a couple of different things is linking up because i'm really i'm loving the youtube um platform and i was thinking about taking my like linking my, I think you can link your Instagram live and your YouTube lives together. Um, so maybe I'll do it like that because I want the video to be saved and Instagram videos are just crap right now. Like to people just don't really want to deal with it. I think half of the time. So anyways, long story short, I haven't marked this cause I, I'm like saving it to block for educational purposes. You can't really even tell um, and I, I can't remember who knit this for us. I should know. Um, but they obviously did a really good job because it doesn't even look like it's not blocked. Like you could steam block right here and it would like probably block out totally fine. Um, and actually I will, I think I had saved this to steam block because it is a natural right here and some of these colors might bleed. So I think that that was my plan was to steam block it. So I'll have to, I'll have to get another, I think I do have, I have a um, Goodwin Johnson sweater. I'm looking at it right now that I can wet block. I have it. So maybe this month I can make that my goal to do a little blocking video. Um, Anyways, this sweater is Hello From My Colors. Hello From My Favorite Colors, I believe, or Hello From My Colors. I'll link it um, in the comments or in the description. Um, and it's by Jessie May. And this is cropped-ish. Like, here's my waistline. Yeah, it's cropped. It's so cute. I love this sweater. I love the fit of it. I love Jessie's designs. If you have ever... Um, if, you, if anything is in your queue by her, I highly recommend her patterns. They're so well written and thought out and everything that she does is just, she just puts so much attention to detail in, um, in like kind of just being thoughtful, thinking of all of the different things and especially when it comes to like 
size and being inclusive. So, um, and this is knit out of Sukapi. And I think in these, it's kind of hard because um, one, I don't have a great memory and that's mostly because I'm such a like creative person. I probably have ADD. I'm probably somewhere on the spectrum. I've never like tested for any of that stuff, but I mean, I'm sure if you just watch these <laughs> freaking uh, YouTube podcasts, you can pick that up. Um, so <laughs> I have like, you know, things in my head and they don't, um, they just go really quickly. Like I move through my thoughts, I move through my ideas, I write them down, I execute them and they're gone. Um, so if I'm talking, if I'm like, my point is, if I'm repeating myself um, through these podcasts, I apologize, but I'm just gonna do it too. Like you maybe have never seen any of the ones previous. And, and I've been thinking about that. Like I want you to be able to pick up, um, you know, like maybe you've missed a few episodes, but it doesn't matter. You don't need to watch those. You can catch up with the latest one and not feel like you're missing something. So I'm going to repeat myself probably talking about Sukapi. Um, Sukapi is a single ply and it is a Rambouillet. It's a non-super wash. Um, you know, when we first got Sukapi, it was so, it took me like over a year to sell this yarn. It did not do well. Um, and I think finally, I'm I'm sure that Caitlin Hunter fell in love with it and made designs out of it. And that was like the um, the reason why it took off. Uh, but it is one of my favorite yarns. It is, um, like I said, it's a single ply. That's a really good kind of shot of it, especially this natural here. And in the skein, it almost looks like a little, well, that's beautiful. Um, maybe this, it almost looks like a little dull. Like you wouldn't be like, oh my God, that is so beautiful and shiny and bright. It is more rustic. It's great for weaving actually. Um, and especially like if you're doing like traditional loom weaving, um, it's really good for tapestry weaving as well. But I, I have a couple of friends who are Navajo that weave with this. And it just has so much life when you're knitting with it and especially in the garment once it's blocked and it's all like bloomed and beautiful. Um, the stitch definition is really beautiful. It's one of my favorite yarns to knit with and it does pill a little bit, but nothing like a superwash single ply. Like those superwash single plies are just awful for pilling. And this is not gonna pill that much. I mean, I have shawls and sweaters that I wear really frequently that are made out of Sukapi that, um, you know, you always get that like little pilling underneath your arms right here. That's almost every wool sweater though, um, and an easy fix. Oh, that's actually a good idea is um, showing you guys different tools for pilling and like sweater care, right? I'm gonna write that idea down again. Things go in and they go out very quickly. Write them down. Email me. Don't send me a DM. I'll never remember it. Um, I should have brought my chapstick. I'm always needing chapstick and then I have to steal chapstick from myself. And I can't keep doing that. Uh, yeah, so I love this sweater. I just wanted to show it to you guys even though it's not blocked. Um, again, it's hello from my... I thought it was hello from my favorite colors. Hello from my colors crop. Oh, and the colors that we used in this are natural for the um, main color. And then this, I kind of, I did it last fall and so I wanted it to be kind of like fall spooky-ish. Um, Acer, I always say Hacer, but that's not right. And Laura, who owns Osser, so bad at pronouncing things. I think it's Osser. Um, I'm sorry for butchering names all the time. Eagle Eye, I can say that. Cinepaw. We'll use that too. That's like right 
here and right here and right here. You could have so much fun with the color combos of this and porch pumpkin. And I think whoever we, whoever knit this, I just kind of let them do their thing with it. They did a great job. So very comfortable. Now I want to block it. Um, what else? Okay, I'm just going to show you guys some things that we have new in the shop. Um, and that's all I'm kind of going to talk about. I try to do like a little educational piece, but I'm worried I'm going to run out of time and I actually need to be somewhere this morning. And so I don't want to go over. Um, and so I'm not going to do like an educational piece, but I am going to do it. I think I'll, I think I'll record a podcast possibly next week, if not for sure the week after. Um, maybe I'll wait till the week after and then I'll have a couple more things to show you guys. So, um, and then obviously I'm going to talk about some other things. Oh, I was going to bring the indigenous collective yarn down. It's upstairs. Okay, she asked Sarah to grab it. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. Will you do me a huge favor? Um, upstairs in my office, in my bag, uh -huh. um, there's a skein of the Indigenous Collective, or you could just bring that whole bag down. There's a what? Um, in that Indigenous Collective yarn, that Odang. Oh, yeah. Upstairs, it's, yeah, in that, like, um, beaver bag. Okay. Big beaver energy bag. Thank you. I'm still recording, too. You're I'm just. Good. Just impromptu here. Um, yeah, I wanna show you guys that and talk about some events and some things we have coming up and books I'm reading and all of that. But let's just get, let's just keep going. Let's just get into it. Um, buttons, we have buttons now. I'm lifting up, look at this. Oh yeah. Very excited. And here's some more. So if you're doing the steak along, I mean, we use buttons for a million different things, right? But um, if you're doing the steak along, we have those. I'm thinking about using a darker button, like I like this one. This is oxblood, and these are also these are all from Merchant and Mills. We just threw them on our little cards. These were leftover cards. If you're a an OG um, FDF customer, we used to put our pins on there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I had these left over from pins that we used to make. And actually, you can see the picture right here behind here. This is my, an old black and white of my, um, grandparents' ranch. So lots of, lots of buttons, lots of different sizes. I just grabbed a couple of trays. Um, they're from Merchant and Mills. So the cool thing is, is that they match the Merchant and Mills fabric. Um, a lot of them do. And if you're a sewist, you can kind of do that matching. We have some, um, you know, they're mostly, this one's cool, unearthed. It's like, I don't know what that is made out of. It's on the website. Enamel? I'm not sure, it's really pretty. And I do plan on showing you guys more fabric things soon. I'm getting, I have like six different um, samples being made right now of sewing patterns. I haven't focused on that much, um, but now I'm like really ready to, to start just doing more samples to show you guys. And I'm really, I'm very excited about that. So, we do have new fabrics in from Merchant and Mel, so make sure to, if you are a sewist, check those out. We have some really pretty ones. All of our oil skins we have in, and those are, um, yeah, those are, if they sell out on Merchant and Mills, it's hard to get them back in. You have to wait a while. So we've really stocked up and some really pretty ones, some ones with some patterns on them. So um, anyways, I'm rambling now. Buttons, buttons. I didn't bring my knitting. I'm still working on my stone crop. I'm binding off the 
uh, body right now. And my goal is, is to get my sleeves done by the end of next week, which is a very lofty goal for me, but I'm just gonna focus and get it done. If I don't get the sleeves done, that's fine because I'm just gonna do the button band to steak and show you guys the steaking video, which is very exciting. Um, Sarah's done with everyone else finished, of course. They did all use a worsted weight. I used Reminisce and Dyed in the Wool, which is a thinner weight. So they used our new worsted. And then I think Sarah maybe used Pishkin. Um, so they're all done. So I'll definitely do like a educational video, but then maybe I'll do like another live. Again, I can do YouTube and Instagram. I need to figure out how to link those up. Okay, now I wanna show you guys something we just got in. It's from Thread and Maple. I'm very, very, very excited about it. Um, you maybe have seen them already on Instagram, but I've been looking for a needle holder that I love leather, um, especially needle holders. I've had a lot of different needle holders over the years. And um, the ones that I use are usually leather and canvas that hold up like the best. I've had like kind of homemade ones, which are great and um, like wool fabric ones, which are also great. But I think for like longevity, having leather for me seems like it, it's the best. Um, so this is from Thread and Maple. And I'll be honest, I was really confused when I first ordered it. I wasn't, I just thought it was like a needle holder but it's basically a binder that comes like this and in the binder is different pages and so there's two different colors of binders and two different sizes of binders this is the smaller size of binder and i'm probably not using like the correct verbiage for these and maybe i should have um i guess i i guess i could have that down but I didn't so here we are um I could, let me just grab my iPad so I can so then that way you guys are like what the hell is she talking about I can't find that on the website even though I will link all of these let's look up the farmer's daughter fibers and Red and maple. Okay, needle binders. Sweet. Okay, so there's regular and there's jumbo. And there is this color is whiskey. And so it's this really nice um, brown tannish brownish whiskey color and then this is the jumbo so big one and this is chocolate now i'm just going to be honest right now this is an investment this is a good treat yourself it's a good christmas present it's a good save up some gift cards it's a good save up your points and get $75 off um, because if you're gonna get everything in here, it it is a huge investment. This will last you the rest of your life though. You won't need to ever get another needle holder again. Um, and so, you know, I think that if we are collecting these tools and we're investing in our craft that you know having something like this is just going to keep it safe it's going to keep it nice you're going to stay organized and that allows you to have like more creative freedom and space too and so again when you look at these prices don't you know be prepared um, the regular one, I'll just tell you the regular, and this isn't, this is just the binder without anything in it, is 192. And then the jumbo, let's just look, is 200. Well, that doesn't seem right. Um, I'm going to double check that that is correct because this is way bigger. Why would you just pay eight more dollars? Hmm, interesting. 
Um, okay, so you have your, your binder and then you can get pages for your binder. Now, everything that we are carrying is chai gu and that's because we carry chai gu needles, but they also have haya haya. Um, they maybe even have Addy, I know they have Addy pages. So if you have different needles and you want to get a binder and some pages, let me know and I will order them for you, no problem. But we're just carrying the Chai Gu because again, that's what needles that we carry. Um, obviously you're looking at this price point and it's a big investment for us too, to carry them. And so I just can't get every single brand of needle um, out there. But again, I'm totally happy to order anything that you need. Um, let me just go back and binder pages. Okay. So these just come apart like this. And this is how you put your pages in. Um, what I like about this is that, and I had planned on moving all of my needles over and I forgot to bring them um, to like actually show you what they look like in there, but that's okay. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, what I like about this is that, you know, I would put all of my stuff in here, but if I was just going to, for like a weekend, or if I was going, um, if I was traveling, if I was coming to knit night and I knew I needed to, you know, change my needles, you can just pull out the page and it closes really nicely like that. There's also a way to, you could do this. And then it's closed. And then there is also a way to, on some of these, to fold it in half so it's like sitting up. Um, so if you're changing your needles out and stuff like that, if you're all set up, you can do that. Which I just think that's really cool that it can, you know, you can kind of, it's a grab and go. Um, put these back. So this one right here, they're, um, they call this a fixed. Um, where you could put your fixed needles in here. And I do think that you could put your fixed needles in here, but honestly, I am planning on using this for my cords. I'm gonna keep all my cords in here. I like to keep my cords um, organized and separate, and that's how I would do that is, um, yeah, putting all of my cords in there like that. Um, again, your fixed needles will definitely fit in there. Personally, I'm not gonna do that. And then this one right here is for your double points. So all of these, you can just pick and choose which ones that you want. You don't have to, you know, you're not getting set up for all of this. If you're like, I never use double points, you don't need this binder. If you love your double points, then you can do that. Um, and again, they just fold over nicely. I just think it's, it's so versatile, very Dexter. Um, okay, so then we start getting into the um, interchangeables. And there are several different interchangeables. The ones that we are carrying are a holder for the blue shorties, the red shorties, um, your Chai Gu small, your Chai Gu large, and then your complete set of Chai Gu. And so here is this one right here. And this is size two through size eight. I'm going to assume, yeah, this would be your um, Chai Gu small. So it's sizes two through eight. And then this also comes off as well. So if you wanted to just take this with you, you could. Um, and then this pocket right here opens up 
And this is where, you know, they are saying that you could keep your circulars. You definitely are not your, um, your cords. I would be keeping other things in here because this pocket is nice and big. Um, and again, like I like my cords. I hate like taking up my whole thing of cords and, you know, looking through all of them to see which ones I need, but totally personal preference. This is just what I personally would do is again, I'd use this one for my cords. Um, oh, I'll show you the inside of the binder too when we're done here. I'll show you on the other one after I take all of these out. So this is what the smalls would look like. This would be your large set. So this is size, um, oh, size nine, nine through 15 is here again. And then there is a way to, oh, maybe it's like this. Okay, so if you take... Cool. I just took those little guys right there and put them on here like this. And then you can set this up like on your table. So if you're working, if you're doing like, you know, some gauge swatch um, and stuff like that, then this would be a good, a good, oh, almost lost you. Um, a good time just to kind of set it up like that. I don't know about you guys, but I love just... I love the notions just as much as I love the yarn and I love being organized. I love things like being aesthetically pleasing and it is just such a lovely like palette cleanser for my brain and my creativity. Um, okay, so then this would be the full set here. And so there's size two through eight on this bottom one and then nine through 15 and you can switch these around, you know, however you want. So there's that. This one has a zipper. You could stick your, um, you could stick, you know, your scissors, or you can, again, you can stick your cords in there. And then here are the red lace, I believe, or the red, um, the red shorties are zero through eight, and then there's 2.5, zero. Maybe this is a size zero, size one, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, and then it goes 3, 2.5, 2, 1.5, 1. So, and these are all, all these pictures are on the website too, so you can really see. And then the pocket, and then the same thing for your blue shorties there. Not sure how many people use blue shorties. You know, a good thing next time what I'll do too, I'm going to write this down. I'll show Trigoo needles. Um, if you're not familiar with them or what blue shorties are or red shorties or all of these other things, I can show you guys all, all everything Trigoo. Um, it's definitely my favorite needle. It is more affordable than I don't know about anymore actually because they have raised their prices um just the that's the way the world is you know going right now they have raised their prices but i don't know what addy prices are like if they've raised their prices as well um because you know a few years ago trigu was pretty significantly cheaper um i felt than than addy um especially for the full sets. Like the full sets are like 2 180 or something like that. Um and that's for like the whole full set. If you want to just get like if you just use, you know, two the the small size which is 2 through 8, that's even cheaper like 110 or something like that. So um I really love the interchangeable of the chai gu though because the red cords are so flexible and nice. I find with a lot of other, um, and even the fixed ones too, you get these kinks in them. And I just can't stand to have that, you know, if you're trying to cruise along on your knitting and you have this little tiny kink, um, it does end up making a big difference. So I, yeah, I really, I really recommend um 
Chaigu. And then for the circulars, or the, sorry, the interchangeables, you can really tighten them down. You don't, you don't have this little like lip on it that you're catching all of the time. I had bought a set of um, interchangeables and they were awful because they just had that like little tiny, tiny um, piece that was of metal that was constantly catching when I was moving my stitches around and I just, I could not stand it. So that is why I love Chaigu, but um, I'll do that in one of my podcast episodes is show you guys all of the, all of the different Chaigu things. And I can, and I'll come back and I'll show you everything put in here too. So again, this is like the big boy. If you have like, every, I mean, I do have all of these sets. Um, so, you know, I would maybe get something like this. I'll probably, I'm going to save up the, um, the price point on these is high and we don't, it, the wholesale is not like your typical 50, 50 wholesale. So I'm going to save up for, for one of these guys too, or maybe treat myself after I've worked really hard on a project or something. Um, and then, yeah, so then this is the smaller one, which actually would be gosh, just as good. It kind of depends what you want to do. Like if you just want to have this like whole full set and everything organized in there and then you're taking your pieces out, that's great. Um, but if you're like, I want to be able to carry all my needles at the same time everywhere I go, you know, maybe then the smaller one would be better. Or maybe you don't have all of those needle sets. Um, you know, maybe you don't need something like the double pointed. I don't use double points, so I wouldn't need that page. Um, and yeah, anyways, so inside of the binder, you have all of these pockets here. So you have like three pockets and this is deep enough. This goes all the way down. You can put a notebook right there and then, um, and then you have this pocket right here. They always come with these really nice little like leather cleaners. So then you can, you know, just do like a little, little touch up, little rub. Um, you could also probably get some leather cleaner for it too if you have like a, a shoe, a boot place. I don't know what they're called. Boot repair probably has really great resources for cleaning leather. Um, and then in the back, they also have this is where you could put, I would put double points there obviously. Or maybe some of them even my fixed right there too. And let's see, does the big boy have the same thing? I think it does. Yeah, same thing. The back, it has all these. And the front, you have your pockets. So, what are we doing for time? Hmm. Okay, we gotta get moving along. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna put it in a newsletter this week and kind of explain it as well. Um, if you want to see any of them or anything like that, just let us know. Um, I did order more of the binders. We hadn't ordered that many originally. And so I did order more binders. They are coming. If anything is sold out, again, I don't think this is like a product that people are going to be like rushing to like get. It's an investment. It's a thoughtful product product that you're going to want to, you know, really think about and plan out. So if you don't see anything, I'm happy to order anything for you. It usually from the time I order, the time I get it is usually between two and three weeks. Um, it comes from Canada. Thread and Maple is an amazing company. Um, it's two women who own it. So another women owned business and, uh, they send it like via FedEx. So it's not, we won't be waiting months and months and months. Um, and yeah, and I got some other fun things from them. These like beautiful beaded stitch markers. I love these. If you are looking for some fun stitch markers, they are here. So you can check those out too. And then we got like these, we've had these before, but these scissor sheets and they just make really beautiful products. Again, things that you're going to have forever. It's not something that's going to wear out. Um, you really will. You'll, you'll have it forever. And sometimes when I think about that, I'm like, you'll have it forever. 
and the way things are made anymore, it's like, will I have it forever? Like, is this gonna break? What happens if this breaks? Is it fixable? Like, is it mendable? And, you know, really looking at all of these things, if something were to happen in 10, 15 years, they're all things that, again, like a somebody at a shoe, a boot um, leather place could um, help you repair and those type of things down the road. I don't foresee any of that happening. They're so well made. I mean, when you think about how they're made and how well made they are and the fact that it's from a small business, the price point makes sense and doesn't seem quite as, you know, shocking when putting it all together. So, um, yeah, anyways. Okay, I want to move on to Recollect Worsted. I have about 20 minutes and I was going to talk about a couple other things, but I might just save them for next week and maybe I'll do like a few episodes this month. I usually try to do like two, maybe three episodes, but maybe I'll do one once a week. So that way I can show you guys all of these things. Um, I'm just writing down what I'm taking off of here so I can... Someday they're gonna have like a notebook on your arm. You know how you can like write things on your arm? You can have like a notebook on your arm and then it just gets stored in your brain when we're half robots. <laughs> okay, Recollect Worsted, I'm very excited about. Um, if you compare it to Recollect, you'll kind of be like, hmm, they don't really seem the same. Um, but that is because Recollect, obviously it's a lighter weight. Um, it's also a two ply. So that that rec that that two ply makes a, a pretty big like um what is the word I'm looking for? Not difference. It is a standout factor in that yarn. Um and the worsted is a three ply, making it a worsted. Um it's a to me it seems like a little bit heavier worsted. It's 210 yards for 100 grams. Um, it's on the black and white um, merino, or black and white rambouillet. Um, the label says black and white mountain merino, which is a rambouillet. And um, yeah, so it is very bouncy, like Recollect. Um, it's very lovely to work with. I'm gonna say, you know, the same thing I said with Sue Copios, like it's a little, underwhelming compared to Juicy DK, which you would get these bright, beautiful, amazing, rich colors. You know, I think sometimes that our non-superwash yarns do are just like, meh. Um, unless you're like a true wool lover and you like feel it and smell it and, you know, really have that appreciation for it. But upon first glance, you know, you're just kind of like, oh, Okay, um, but working with it, it is so bouncy and rich. I'm knitting a hat, which of course I forgot to bring. Lindsay's knitting a hat and she had left it for me, but of course I didn't record my podcast last week. And so, um, yeah, and then we're getting samples made, but I am waiting because we're going to do Reminisce Worsted, which is the same thing but it's not with the black and white. Um, it's just white. Just same with Reminis Sport. Um, and I just felt like it was easier just to call it Reminis and Recollect Worsted because it's basically the same thing. It's just a you know heavier weight instead of like adding new two new names. That would just be crazy. So um, yeah, I I'm excited to see what everybody does with this. I'm going to send some skeins out to some designers. I've noticed some designers have actually purchased some. And so it's going to be really fun to see where this goes. When I released Recollect, I had sent out like PR boxes kind of to everybody. And, and so there are all these designs coming out right away. And that was really, I think, a big part of like making it really popular. Um, and I just didn't do that because um, it's a lot of work. It's the timing and it's also more that, not that I don't, I never mind giving, you know, um, yarn support, but sometimes when you send 12 colors to a designer, um, 
you, they're just not going to use it all. You know, I just didn't want to see things go to waste. And I could imagine as a designer getting a bunch of yarn is also really overwhelming. So there will be designs coming out in it. It's just going to be like a little bit more slow going. And I think I can say that Jen, um, Jennifer Berg, who is native knitter on Instagram, she's working on a sweater that is going to be released for Rhinebeck during Rhinebeck. Um, we have another sweater coming out in, um, and so hers is Spin Cycle in um, Recollect Worsted. And then Jessie May has a sweater coming out in Pishkin and Ritual Dyes. And we have, I have three things coming out right back. Um, and we're going to be at Wool and Folk um, for right back. And so you will see some of this. I'm not bringing all of the colors. I'll probably bring like six colors of Recollect Worsted and then like six colors of, oh, and Reminisce too, I could bring. And then like six um, Spin Cycle dyed in the wool. So I'm really excited. We can talk, let's talk about right back another time. I'm like, oh, let's, lots to share there. I have so much, I have, there's so much going on this fall and I'm so excited about it um, to share everything with you guys, but I'm gonna stay focused. Focus. Um, and so the worsted, we, um, Connie, who is an awesome local knitter of ours, customer, um, she made these swatches. So I'll just show you guys colors and then we can kind of, I just think like move on. This is Cinepaw. And this is actually a little bit different recipe that we used on this than we do our other Cinepaws. It's same color, you know, um, a little bit darker on this, of course, because it's the black and white, uh, but yeah, so pretty. And then um, Medicine Grizzly and Rank Bronc and Ranch Romance, nice and dark and moody. And the yellow that we chose was Sunny's. Let's make sure that's right. Sunny's. And like, are these colors accurate right here? Porch Pumpkin, of course. Porch Pumpkin is named after um, obviously a porch pumpkin, but Xander and I always have this habit of leaving our pumpkins out to rot till like Christmas time. Um, so that's where porch pumpkin came from. And Fair Gulch. This one's so pretty. I just want to make sure that it gets. Yeah. So obviously these are all really dark and moody because of that um, gray base on them. Pine drop. Oh no, bonsai, I'm sorry, bonsai. And I've got dreams to remember. I love dreams. Um, pretty shield, beautiful. And dumpling, which is also a favorite. So it's gonna be really fun to put our colors also on um, the reminisce um and then they're like brighter and we can really mix them with these ones and so this is in wound up you can kind of see that like that ply is so pretty i think you guys are really gonna love using this yarn and we've we've needed a worsted weight pishkin is a heavy dk light worsted i'm gonna say this is like a heavy worsted light Aaron. Um, the sample that we're gonna, that I'm wait, waiting for Reminis to get dyed is, um, Brianne Moody has a new sweater and oh, it's kind of a funny name. I can't remember. It's like a long, it's like a few, it's almost like hello from my favorite color. You know, it's like a longer name. And so I can't remember off the top of my head. Check it out on her Instagram. It's really cool. Um, and so we're going to get that made and it's out of an Aaron weight. And I think it, the uh, Recollect Worsted is going to work great with it. 
So um, I pulled some spin cycle to kind of match a little bit, but that's gonna take too much time because I'm gonna be sitting here like playing around and then I start picking up spin cycle and it's all gone. Um, I do wanna show you the um, Indigenous Collective from August. This is Pixie. It's on Odang. It's a cereal packet and silk. I did a YouTube video on different um, things that you could use for the cereal packet and I linked patterns. If you're in the Indigenous Collective, I linked patterns in the blog. Um, and the blog is at the bottom of the website and it says Indigenous Collective and then once you sign up, if you click that you allow emails from us, then you should get an email with the password. If you don't get that email, no worries, just shoot us an email and I'll give it to you. Um, and so you just need to be signed up for the Indigenous Collective. It's a subscription and I love this. I love the way that the, um, the colors came out. It is like, I was inspired by the water. Um, it's not an ox, water, water buffalo. I don't know. And just a lot of other things. I talk about that all on the blog. So if you are not signed up for the Indigenous Collective, you should sign up for the Indigenous Collective. I'm gonna give you a hint right here. What is for August? Um, let me see if I can, yeah. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna share lots about that later on, but it's gonna be a really, really good one. I hope you guys get in on it. Um, and it's Monica Brains Yellow is gonna be the artist. So you can kind of check her stuff off. She's awesome. I got to meet her in person. And of course I had to come home with a new painting. Um, we needed, we needed an indigenous artist, um, you know, kind of front and center here at FDF, especially with the indigenous collective. So, so Agnes, um, I can't wait to, I cannot wait to tell you guys all about Agnes. Just sign up for that indigenous collective so you can hear all about it. Don't miss it. It's going to be good. Um, events coming up. Oh, so many events. Um, well, this weekend we're doing a revamp in the shop. And so if you've been to the shop or you have um, seen our lives, we have like kind of a, I'm just going to pick this up and I'll show you guys. Right here is our mezzanine and upstairs is where we do like all of our knitting, um, like our, our stitch and bitch. And sometimes we even do classes up there. Um, it's a great, just like little space to kind of hang out. And the, um, underneath the mezzanine, the lighting isn't great, um, but it's a really beautiful space down there. And it, the yarn just isn't organized in the most effective way to see it all. And so we are going to be putting slat boards up. Um, I really resist like grid wall and slat board and all that stuff. I mean, you guys know I really like eclectic things and antique things and um, but the store is filling up with more merchandise than I ever thought. We're doing a lot more gifty stuff because we have a lot of people, I've said this before, we have a lot of people in town who don't knit, but they want to buy stuff. And so it's turning into like half gift shop, half bookstore, half um, yarn shop. So I just wanted to make sure that the yarn was getting displayed the best way possible. So we're putting slat board up on all of the walls going back underneath the mezzanine. All the juicy DK is gonna get put on slat board, which is gonna be so nice because all of those speckled yarns need to be upright. Like having them in cubbies, you just lose it. You don't see any of it. So we're closed this weekend over Labor Day weekend and we're gonna spend all day Friday, some of Saturday, and then all day Monday getting all of those up and kind of revamping the hole underneath the mezzanine and then some other areas and getting lots of new products out. So I can't wait next week, I'll show you guys. Um, I wish the lighting was better back there. I could even record a podcast. We can see, I mean, it might be fine for one episode, especially if I'm talking about needles and um, you know that type of stuff that maybe the colors wouldn't matter as much. Um, it's just, you know, it is what it is. I, I guess maybe 
I don't know, it would be nice to have. It would be nice to have better lighting and I'm sure that I could do it, but it's expensive. And our yarn shop isn't that busy enough to like make those investments of like amazing, super expensive lighting. I can't really justify it at this time, but just getting everything up on the walls is gonna be great. So we got that going on. We have an anniversary party on September 23rd. Um, and we're going to have sales. We're going to have cupcakes. We're going to, I mean, if you guys have ever been to an FDF event, you know that we go all out cocktails, champagne, um, special colorways. It's just, it's really fun. Our anniversary party is one of my favorite things that we do. So, and it's funny. I don't know if I said this in the last episode or maybe in a live video, but you know, I really started FDF in January of 2016, um, but I never celebrate that. I don't even really think about it. I always celebrate our anniversary here at the shop. And so, you know, it just seemed, it, I don't know, it just makes sense. Um, yeah, but I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be good. It's gonna be really fun. And let's see here what else we have going on. Um, next week, we have um, Alexis Bird coming to teach classes. And her classes, if you sign up for both the classes, you get a $30 gift card, um, which is awesome. And yeah, there is a possibility that I'm, I've asked if I can make those classes virtual. I'm not really sure how that will work. Um, it's a weird time for us because it's right after Labor Day weekend. It's on a Tuesday, Wednesday. And so filling those spots is hard. We already have a hard time filling classes in general, but then on a Tuesday, Thursday, but definitely worth it. Alexis is awesome. Um, having that resource is pretty incredible here. So a lot of our, a lot of our regulars are out of town next week too. Um, everybody's kind of off adventuring. We're jealous of them. Um, and then we have a Halloween party that we're gonna do. I'm gonna um, read tarot cards. We have somebody coming in to do Reiki. I'm getting so much Halloween crap, you guys. And it's like fun Halloween stuff that doesn't scream Halloween. It just screams more like witchy vibes. Um, really cool things. I can't wait to show you all the things that we're like starting to get in. So I'm gonna have to do a podcast every week just to like keep showing you all the things. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, I don't want to make this like, you know, um, a, what is that channel called? The Home Shopping Network. Um, you know, I want to bring you other resources, but I also just am excited about everything. So, um, I have a really big announcement coming out next week and I can't wait to share that with you guys. I will wait to do the podcast until that is out. Um, it's, I've, I haven't been this excited about something in years as far as work goes. When I was telling Sarah this morning, when I started FDF, like I had huge lofty goals that I, I thought would take years to accomplish. And I started like accomplishing those things pretty damn quick. And then after the shop, it was kind of like, okay, sweet, we're here, we've made it. Like, let's just enjoy the ride. But when we get asked to partner and do things or, um, you know, come up with just things I never like goals that I don't know, I guess, um, not that I didn't think were attainable, but are just really cool opportunities. It's really fun to, to have that still, you know, after I started, well, 2016, so for, Seven years? No, that can't be right. In seven years ago? That's crazy. Wow. Um, yeah, to still be like this excited about things. And I really started doing more things kind of on my own, like the Wisp book and the um, Wooden Smoke book. And I try to make opportunities for myself. Um, and I'm in a place where I can really do that. But when other opportunities come our way, it's just like, I don't know. It's cool. It's amazing. I'm excited and I'm proud. Um, and I'll tell you guys next week. 
Um, gosh, I think that's kind of it. I mean, I had like two or three other things I want to show you guys, but again, I, I do, I actually do need to be somewhere and I have to leave in like five minutes. So, um, I'm gonna have to come in early and clean all my podcasting crap up. Um, so yeah, a uh, prize this week. Uh, do you guys want some worsted? Like, how about we do three skeins of worsted and maybe one of these cute little new um, stitch markers. That'll be good. And then as soon as like, you know, we're getting more of the threaded maple stuff in, I do want to do a big threaded maple giveaway. Um, I just, I have all these products I've brought in for fall and I need to start selling some of them before I can be just giving things away. But three skeins of worsted sounds really good to me. Um, okay, I think that's it. Uh, oh, I wanted to talk about books really quick. Okay, just really quick because we're going to have to move on with books because I'm going to be reading more books and we need to talk about them. Fourth of July Creek, who read it? Tell me what you think in the comments. I loved the writing. I loved the um, being able to recognize like all of these spots, especially in Missoula, like the bar that he went to and he got really drunk with his friends. Like I've been to that bar. It was right across the street from my apartment in Missoula. Um, this is placed in the 80s. I was there in the early 2000s, but I did hang out in Missoula in the 80s and 90s um, when I was a kid so I could still picture it very well. Um, I loved, again, I loved the writing. The characters in it, I hated. I hate, I hated him. I hated Benjamin Pearl, I hated Pete. Can go, I was, I was not a fan. Um, that was my major complaint. Tell me what you thought. Frick Pete, God, so annoying. I thought it was, by the description on the back too, it seemed much different than what the book was. I thought it was going to be like about a feral kid that they had found. It wasn't. I mean, he was, but he it was a whole backstory there. So read it too if you haven't. Read it and you can hate Pete with me. Um, or maybe not. Maybe you love Pete. Maybe maybe you understand where, where Pete's at in his life, but not me. Okay, the book I'm reading right now though and we are going to, I've ordered the book. I've ordered, I think six or seven new titles um, because again, I'm starting a bookstore now. Um, it's a slippery slope. Um, I ordered this book and it's by Jamie Ford. It's called The Many Daughters of Afon Moy. Um, and Jamie Ford is actually from um, Great Falls. He might live in Seattle now. He did a book reading last week and that was the same night as our fry bread feed and so I was just so bummed. He is an amazing man. He is amazing um, anti-racist advocate and just, he has other books out there. I, this is the first book I've read of his. I can already tell it's going to be one of my favorite novels ever. It's so, so, so good. Um, and I'm not going to give you a description or anything like that because I'll probably muck it up. Um, but we're getting the book in, read it. I'm listening to it and I'm reading it, which I've never done that before. Um, I'm mostly reading it though, because again, these thoughts are like right now and I can't concentrate. I've been trying to walk and read it or listen to it. And yeah, I just, it's just too much. So, um, very good. I hope you guys read it and so we can talk about that um, in the comments. And I think that's it for now. So hopefully I get those books in next week and I can show you some of the other ones because I bought my all-time favorite book. I found they re-released it, new cover, and we can actually purchase it now. So I'm excited about that. Definitely going to be in the indigenous, um, in the indigenous collective inspiration at some point. That's it. Goodbye. See you guys later. Um, just subscribe, like, comment <coughs> for the giveaway. Sorry. <coughs> okay, I'm going. Bye.